right, measurement errors. Now, this is a, a very challenging topic for people to understand. And probably the main reason for that is they've got a lot of formulas. And a lot of people, they try and follow the formulas and they really don't know what they're doing. So we're going to go straight into the example and I'm going to try and explain it in a way where we're not really thinking about the formulas too much. And quite often it's better if you just don't use formulas to do this. And that's just my opinion. All right. Now, for this example, the following digital scale measures the weight of food in kilograms. So here we have some cherries, and they have been weighed at 0 0.148 kilograms. Question A is quite easy to answer because it's just saying, what is the weight of the cherries in kilograms? 0 0.148. So this is a good start, something nice and simple. Question B, not too bad either. It's saying, what is the precision or limit of reading Back here, it says the limit of reading or precision is the smallest unit on your measuring instrument. Okay, so what is the smallest unit on this measuring instrument? And basically, the smallest unit of measurement for this one would be 0 0.001. And the reason for that is because that is the smallest weight it can measure. It can never go beyond three decimal places because it's not been made to be able to do that. You could not have a 0 0.0009 kilogram weight because it doesn't have the ability to display that on the screen. Okay, so the smallest, the precision or the limit of reading is 0 0.001 kilograms, or we could also say one gram since 0 0.001 kilograms is the same as a gram. Okay, now we're going to do question C now, which is about what's called the upper and lower bounds. And I'm going to do question D and E on a separate video because they, they take quite a while to do and they're quite complicated. Upper and lower bounds are quite complex as well. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to do this in green, and we're going to explore what happens we're going to explore different numbers that, or different weights that the cherries could be, okay? And in all honesty, the cherries could be 0 0.1481 kilograms. It's quite possible that they weigh that much because this instrument would have rounded that to 0 0.148. What are some other weights that would have rounded to 0 0.148? Well, we could have had 0 0.1482, we could have had 0 0.1483, we could have had 0 0.1484. All four of these would have rounded to 0 0.148. Now, to be perfectly honest, it couldn't really be 1485, because 1485 would have rounded to 148, oh sorry, to 149. Sorry, 0 0.149. So we know it can't really be that amount there, but we can still go further than 1484. We could have 14849, we could have 1484999, and the nines can just go on forever. So quite often when we do this, because the nines go on forever, we just get lazy and we go, all right, well, what we'll actually say is that 148. Five. We'll just say that 1485 is the maximum it can go and still be measured as 0.148 kilograms. Okay, so that because they don't want to write all the nines down, they just go, all right, we'll just accept 0.1485 as a as an answer to this. Okay. So we can also we also got another set of numbers where we go lower. For instance, we could have 0.1479. That would round to 0.148, you can have 0 0.1478, 0 0.1477, these all would round to 0 0.148, 0 0.1476 of course, and also 0 0.1475, that would also round up to 0 0.148. And these two numbers that I've circled are called the lower and upper bounds, because they are the smallest and largest amounts you could have that would still measure as 0 0.148 kilograms. So we're going to say the upper bound 
is 0 0.1485 kilograms and the lower bound is 0 0.1475 kilograms. What I want to point out is a, uh, a special number we're going to use here and the number is taken by taking your precision, your 0 0.001, and dividing it by 2, which gives you 0 0.005. And this number has a special name. It's called the absolute error. Okay, if you look at your formulas, it's half times the precision, which is what I've just done. I've taken the precision and divided by 2. That's the same as times it by half. So why do we call this the um, absolute error? Absolute. Oh, oh, it's annoying when I do that. So I just move the whole screen. Absolute, absolute error. Okay, now this number, the absolute error, is useful when you want to find the upper and lower bounds because... If I had taken my weight, actually I'll do this in red. If I'd taken my weight of 0 0.148 and added my absolute error of 0 0.005, it would give me my upper bound. And if I'd taken my measurement of 0 0.148 and subtracted 0 0.0005, it would have found my lower bound. And this is something we notice here in the formulas. It talks about the upper bound is the measurement plus the absolute error, and the lower bound is the measurement minus the absolute error.